Matt, do you think we're going to see any dogs in the office for Take Your Dog to Work Day today? I don't know. I feel like we did we fail the listener potentially by not tipping them off that today was Take Your Dog to Work Day? Maybe. I worry. Uh, hmm. Maybe. I'll say maybe we maybe one dog makes its way in here. You? Yeah. I, I thought about bringing Winnie in, but then I thought, oh, she's still a little hyper. Maybe not. She's still uh, a puppy. <laughs> well, yeah, she's still a puppy. Is she still taking dumps on the floor? Every now and then, yeah. Okay. Well, you won't, wouldn't yeah. want that to happen either, right? I definitely do not want that to happen. Or does she only do that at home? Uh, she's only done that at our home, yeah. And you've taken her indoors to other people's homes? Yes. Hmm. So maybe she's marking her spot there. Maybe she thinks that's an okay place to go? Maybe. Maybe. Oh, I'm not a dog expert. She does do excited pee though so if she gets oh, yeah. excited she pees a little sure 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 so, yeah so maybe bringing her to work and around all these new people who just want to pet the puppy she might go oh, i'm peeing yeah but don't we all do that from time to time oh uh, yeah get a little bit too excited oh well, yeah there it goes jump rope yeah sneeze yeah take your dog to work day hmm you know, dogs, oftentimes, they encounter each other and they start barking. Or they smell each other's butts. That's true. Them smelling each other's butts would not affect the radio shows that occur in this building as much as them barking a ton. Good point. No. And, you know, it is a radio station, not a bank. So we could be like, oh, it's take your dog to work day. That's just dogs barking okay. in the uh, cubicles right now. <laughs> a dog in every cube. Wouldn't that be a great workplace? Yeah, I, I kind of visual, you know, the dogs playing poker. Yeah. I kind of see that, but instead they're in cubes and maybe they're playing poker virtually. I was going to say solitaire, yep. Solitaire, they're just playing solitaire. Oh, yes. Do you believe in pandas, Kate? Do I believe in pandas? Yeah. Do you think pandas are real? Yes. Well, apparently that's a thing now on the internet. Pandas aren't real. Okay. So uh, I would like to assure you, Kate, and you, dear listener, that pandas indeed are real. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. You just don't see them out in the wild, you know? Well, I'm not in China, so I'm not going to be looking for them in the wild. You can see them at the zoo, which doesn't count as the wild. Are they all over the okay. place in China? Yeah, that's where they're from. That's where they're from. Are pandas, are they, aren't they? are pandas an endangered deal? They, they have a hard time getting the pan pandas to mate, or am I thinking of a different species? No, I think you're right. I think your pandas are endangered, yeah. Oh, okay. But I think it might be because they're very lovable and dumb. <laughs> Every time I see pandas on Instagram, <laughs> it's because they're like falling down a hill or off of a tree or... Doing like very slapsticky comedy stuff. I'm like, right. that's why they're endangered. Right. Pandas, you need to stop being klutzes and go do the, do the dirty and create more pandas. I just want to, I just want to hug them. They're so sweet. Pandas are all over the place in China. I don't know that I've ever heard that before. I don't think they're all over the place. Like street corners and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Who says that pandas aren't real? Like what's the basis? Like, is this the flatlander people? Uh, probably that or adjacent to it. Okay. So it took off on TikTok. So maybe it's just TikTokers trying to fool us in this, mm. into talking about how pandas aren't real. Like how many suckers do you think we can get? I think that pandas aren't real. I mean, how do they explain the footage of pandas that we've already seen? It's not Bigfoot. Uh, humans in panda costumes. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. That's it. But that'd be pretty good con considering, I mean, I remember panda footage from way back in the back of my day. Right. Pandas have been around since the 80s. That'd be a pretty impressive panda suit if that's humans in there. This is all to say that pandas indeed are real. I feel 100% confident in that. Me too. And I'm typically pretty conservative when it comes to my certainty in things. 100%. Not 99. I'm going with it. 100% going out on a limb here. Ha, like a panda might.
like a panda before it falls down. Rolling down the hill. There he goes. Marty McFly is coming to Broadway, Matt. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, that's not. That's yep. Yeah, nope. That's not the Back to the Future music. I don't remember how it goes off the top of my head. I can only see Huey Lewis, Power of Love. Oh yeah. No, back in time. Gotta go back in time. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Thanks. Do you think they'll sing that at the musical? I sure hope so. I sure hope that Huey Lewis makes an appearance in the musical like he did in the movie. Huey Lewis as himself in the musical? No. I think he should be in character. Yeah. So a fake, someone playing Huey Lewis. No, I think Huey Lewis should be a character in the show like he was in the movie. Well, I understand that part, but what I'm saying is in the musical, you are saying that Huey Lewis plays the role of Huey Lewis? No. Okay. Huey Lewis plays a character oh, in the show. A non-Huey Lewis character. Like he does in the movie. You think he's got the free time to sign up for a Broadway musical? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Oh. He's deaf now. They don't tour that much. He's deaf? Yeah. Huey Lewis has tons of hearing problems. That's why they don't tour as much. Oh. Yeah. I, I wasn't really wondering. I didn't know that they weren't touring. Yeah. That's a shame. He he uh, lost most of his hearing from his career with Huey Lewis in the news. Yeah. His concerts get loud. Got to wear ear protection. Yeah. Yeah. And if you go to concerts, I recommend, you know, some earplugs also. I was just mm-hmm. at a concert and I was laughing at the people wearing earplugs. <laughs> wow, Kate. I know. I know. I'm like, you don't get your hearing back. So don't go to a concert. Ever? Just listen to your CD player in your car and Sheesh. relatively low volume. CD player. I know. You can still feel the, uh, the doom, 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 doom. You can still feel that like on your chest. And they make high definition ones too, by the way. High definition earbuds. That way you can still hear everything without it just being basically numbing a bunch of the frequencies too. Gotcha. Huh. Okay. Yeah. You ever see kids at ball games and they start firing off the fireworks and the kids start covering their ears? Mm, They've got very sensitive no. ears, the young people do. Yeah. You, you've never seen a kid cover their ears when loud noises are happening? You said ball games. I've never been at a ball game where kids were covering their ears because of fireworks. Okay. We bought our kids headphones for 4th of July when we were at an actual display. Earplugs or headphones? Headphones. Okay. Yeah, but <laughs> at a concert, as a grown-up, I was laughing at people wearing earplugs. Seems kind of mean. Kind of, but I was kind of like, why are you at the concert if you don't want the noise? Because they want to hear the music, but they don't need it at that volume? Is why? Okay. Live music isn't any good unless your ears are ringing the next day? I guess my ears don't ring the next day, so maybe I'm, I've got radio hearing loss. You just got a bunch of crap in your ears. You got a bunch of earwax in there, probably. Probably. Yeah. So back to the future, coming to Broadway. (laughs) Yeah. Marty McFly and Doc Brown, they were shown in a teaser trailer. in the one and only DeLorean with the words that says, synchronize your watches. So we don't know anything like the cast or which theater, but it's coming to Broadway. And they do have a website, backtothefuturemusical.com, where you can sign up for ticket information. And it's headed to Broadway next year, 2023. Yes. Thanks, Kate. Yeah. You see the deal about Brad Pitt talking about retirement, Kate? I saw something like he's on the last leg of his career or something like that. Yeah, the quote is, I consider myself on my last leg this last semester or trimester. Mm. What is this section going to be? And how do I want to design that? So he's already had more niche roles within the last 10 years, I would say. Right? He's not as leading man-ish as he once was. Right. 58 years old. And so if he says this last trimester... He's been working for like 30 years now, so what, that gives him another potentially 15 years of work, if you follow the trimester rule? Yeah. So, 
I, I think maybe it means he's not necessarily retiring tomorrow. Pulling a Daniel Day Lewis, you know, he retired really young. Did he? Yeah, he's retired. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, Daniel okay. Day. You think Brad Pitt's gonna pull like a Tom Brady and retire, and then just say "kidding," gonna re- come back? I think maybe he will be smarter than that and not retire prematurely. Yeah. The best part about the story is that it's because us the opportunity to say that Tom Brady's an idiot, right, Kate? Dum dum. Dum dum. Sorry, I sh- dum dum is the official word that we use there. <laughs> uh, but did you see Gronkowski isn't coming back? Gronk? For now, this is his second retirement. So give him a minute. Yeah. Okay. He retired from the Patriots. Yeah, it was just like earlier this week or last week where it was like, nope, not doing it. Not going to do it. But yep, I still look forward to retiring. It sounds like a great time. Yeah, wouldn't it be nice to be able to retire? Twice before you're 40? Yeah. That'd be, a good, that'd be a good place to be, yeah. All right, Kate. Amazon shows off Alexa feature that mimics the voices of your dead relatives. Oh. Yeah. It's an experimental feature, so it might not be coming, but they said all they needed was one minute of someone's voice, and then they could, for example, the deal they did here... As you see in this experience, instead of Alexa's voice reading the book, it's the kid's grandma's voice. Mm. So that way, dead grandma can continue reading stories to the children. That's pretty cool. They just need like a minute sample. So if you have like a video of grandma talking about anything, Alexa can... That's what they claim. It was just a tech demo now, so there's no guarantees that this will be a thing. You think it's cool? I thought it was maybe possibly creepy. No, I think it's cool. Oh, okay. Coming from someone who I wish we had, like when my dad was sick, I wish we'd recorded him reading the night before Christmas Oh, because he used to read that and I wish we had had him record that so we could read it moving forward. But That's sweet. Yeah. But I call my my parents' landline to hear him on the answering machine. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. Yeah, I don't think it's creepy. I think it would be creepy if it's like all like, let me ask you this. Is it all the time Alexa voice or is it just for like, hey, Alexa, read me a story like grandma? Well, this isn't something that they promise is coming to market. So uh, okay. there's no real info on how that would be, how that okay. would work. But my guess is like, hey, have grandma read me a story. Yeah. Would probably be how that goes. Okay. I think that's cool. If you said, hey, Alexa, put three bottles of vodka on my shopping list and it's your grandma's voice <laughs> yeah. coming back like added three right. bottles of vodka i'd be like thanks grandma right <laughs> or you're summoning your grandma to turn off and on your lights or adjust your thermostat yes. and all that yes that might be a bit weird yeah grandma <laughs> is your butler in the afterlife well in the amazon afterlife there you go yeah no i, th- I think the idea of having a relative read a story like that if they're sick and you know you've ha- you've got the time i think that's very sweet but i just for whatever reason the synthesizing of the voice mm, is, mm-hmm. is what kind of weirds me out on it but i might just be i might just be overthinking i don't know wouldn't be the first time <laughs> probably not the last time nope stay tuned to every future edition of matt and kate bill nye is now the married guy matt Oh, has he been a lifelong bachelor? Or? No, he was married for seven weeks in 2006, but they annulled oh, okay. the marriage. So this will be his second marriage. But Bill Nye, the science guy, married a journalist named Liza Mundy. Liza Mundy. See, I thought maybe he was married to science. You know how priests are like married right. to God. Mm. So I thought mm. maybe that was what was happening. And maybe he was getting a divorce from science and... Marrying a human instead. Bill Nye, the married guy. Just doesn't have the same ring as the science guy, right? Not quite. Yet. Maybe it's because we just haven't heard it. So, sorry to all the ladies and gentlemen who were hoping to snag Bill Nye to be their partner. (laughs) Looks like you're going to have to wait for the divorce. Or annulment. Maybe a second time. Annulment, huh? Yeah. Is he Catholic? I don't know. 
He and his first wife were only husband and wife for seven weeks. Their union was annulled due to an invalid marriage license. Oh. Yeah. Huh. I wonder what that means. I don't know. Ooh, just got the chills. He does have a daughter from being married for seven weeks. She's 19. Really? Oh, okay. And she was at the marriage. She was at the wedding. Gotcha. I know a lot of times the whole fraudulent marriage deal is because they never consummated. But in this case, sounds like they probably did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bill Nye, off the market. Three easy ways to prevent chafing this summer. Okay. Do you have chafing issues or would you rather not say? No, I don't think I have chafing issues. All right, so they say watch out for the cotton when it's muggy out because the cotton holds on to the moisture. Okay. And then, you know, you sweat and then it doesn't dry fast enough and then, whoop, you're chafed. Gotcha. So they say try one of the, like, athletic type shirts, you know, the more synthetic kind of fabrics. It allows them for more cooling, the airflow to work its way through there, minimizing friction. And then body glide. Have you ever tried body glide? Yes. Okay. I had to use that when I was running. Okay. And just put that in your various different crevices, crevice No, usually um, on the inside of my upper arm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not underarm, but upper, upper arm. Yeah. Upper under uh, arm, but not underarm. Correct. Not your armpit. Okay. Not my armpit. Yeah. Uh, underarms and thighs, and they say body glide or Vaseline works they say yeah yeah and finally band-aids in one particular area you know belly button for your belly button i mean maybe if you've got an audi that could chafe right yeah that's a good point yeah i want to chafe your audi (laughs) is that the title for today's podcast i think so (laughs) oh yeah good reminder kate Matt and Kate podcast. It's in your podcast player of choice. Get you some. And then never miss most minutes of Matt and Kate. Right, Kate? Never miss most minutes. Yep. <laughs> That's right. Sean Mendez is coming to the big screen. As an alligator, right? As a crocodile. Croc. Oh, sorry. My bad. There's a difference. As a crocodile. Now, this is one of those. It's like a live action Deal, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they will CGI a reptile out of Sean Mendes. Yes. And the movie is Lyle Lyle Crocodile, and it is based on the book by Bernard Weber. Have you read it? Uh, I've seen these, yeah. I think there's a series. Based on Lyle Lyle Crocodile? It's a sequel to The House on 88th Street, and it was published in 1962. Sean Mendez was just waiting for the right moment to for his big screen debut. Apparently. Yeah. Yeah. So this is his first feature film, which kind of blows my mind. I'm kind of surprised, actually, that he hasn't played something yet. And that he's not even like himself in it. <laughs> he's right. a crocodile. Eh, he's too ugly of a fellow to be in feature films. Right. Right. Lyle Lyle Crocodile. Javier Bardem. Constance Wu. Winslow Fagley, they're all going to be in it and is due out in theaters October? Yeah. October. October. It's kind of cute trailer. I watched it this morning. Yeah. Any highlights? Sean Mendes sings. Yeah. Sean Mendes sings in crocodile form. Mm hmm. Crocodile tries to attack me and gets a frying pan on head. I searched for crocodile versus alligator, but then a news item came up. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that just happened earlier this week. ReptileDirect.com, alligators versus crocodiles, 10 surprising differences. Okay, now I can't remember which one. Now I have to think about this. Uh, Crocodile, the teeth are on the outside. Alligator, the teeth are on the inside. Oh, I don't know maybe i feel like that was a steve Irwin moment that i learned something there's all kinds of questions on here size snout shape color and pattern bite force <laughs> hopefully you'll never be in a situation where you experience a bite firsthand 
Right. But if you're curious, crocodiles have a more powerful bite force. Crocodiles are bigger and heavier. Tooth shape. Crocodiles have a jaw that closes from the top down. As a result, they have visible teeth on both the top and bottom jaws. Ugh. Sorry, there's a photo here. Right up on it. Right on it. It's chompers. The teeth interlock and produce a jagged appearance. Yeah, that does look like they're on the outside. Thanks, Steve Irwin. Yeah. R.I.P. Steve. R.I.P. Oh, that gave us a... Oh, I blew it. That could have been a celebrity dead or alive. I mean, that was kind of an obvious one, right? Give me a hard one. Yeah. No, well, it's Friday. I'm trying to keep it easy. It's Friday. <laughs> Alligator versus crocodile, which would win in a fight. Are you asking me or is that a title? They're both apex predators. That's one of the deals on reptiledirect.com. Alligators okay. versus crocodiles. Do you know which would be more likely to win in a fight? I think I would say crocodile. Yeah, correct. Crocodiles. Bigger, stronger, and more capable, it says here. Mm -hmm. that's not to say that alligators won't do damage they have their merits but in the animal kingdom the strongest usually come out on top reptiles alligators exciting matt what do you think a health and wellness expert said the best drink to enjoy on a hot hot day is a health and wellness this is going to be something not that not that cool they're not going to say natter days they're not going to say seltzers yeah no (laughs) I give up. I'm out of, I'm out of guessing. Like, water. As soon as I say it, you're going to be like, oh, I knew that. Uh, water? No. Okay. Nutrition. Hot, hot day. Gatorade. Pickle juice. Pickle juice, of course. Pickle juice. Yeah. Health and wellness expert posted a list of reasons to drink pickle juice on a hot, hot day. Not only can it help you recover after a workout. It can help regulate your blood sugar. It can help with muscle cramps. Uh, some people say it's a claim to ha- a hangover cure. Some people, including you? Yes, me. Okay. Yes, that's me. Yeah, I've tried it before. I am the health and wellness. Uh, <laughs> thanks to you. You gave me that health and wellness tip a while back. Yeah. <laughs> the health and wellness tip for how to recover from mistreating your body with a bunch of booze the night before or if you're smart enough the night of right the night of yeah, yeah. If you can remember to do it the night of and then the next morning yeah. yeah don't pass out drunk without pickle juice in your system chug a lug Pooh bear <laughs> i don't know if i've heard that one before i think it's from 16 candles i could be wrong okay but i've been saying it for about 30 years so i should know where it comes from yeah come on Chugalug Pooh Bear. Yeah, 16 candles. All right. Boom. All over it. Yes. Now, how much pickle juice can you take down in one sitting? Me personally? Yes, you personally in this particular case. Yeah. I, I mean, that could be something we do for the show. Okay. Hang out in the break room and chug, 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 chug. You think you could do a 20 ouncer? Yeah. Wow. Okay. I like pickle juice. I know, I know. Yeah. I mean, the way this health and wellness expert talks, it makes me think that someone's got their little tumbler and they're sitting at the lake. Yeah. And it's full of pickle juice and just all day long. So at the bar one time, I ordered a pickle back, which I was just expecting them to just pour in pickle juice, but it was like a mixer. It looked like a, like a grenadine bottle, only it was pickle juice. <laughs> Yeah, I could tell it wasn't like pickle juice, but it was pickled enough that I felt like a champ. So a pickle back is when they just give you a shot of pickle juice, right? With your stuff? Right. Right. And in this case, they just mixed it in with... In this case, they just poured it over ice in a little cocktail glass, but it looked like it was a mixer. Oh, just by itself. It wasn't mixed with the actual alcoholic beverage? Correct. Huh. Interesting. All right. Well, thanks, Kate. We love pickle news on this show. Love it. Loving it. Boop, boop, bap, bap. All right, take that back. You currently have a deal with Wendy's. Never mind. Take it back. 